And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Third Generation Wrestling Podcast here on a Saturday night. I'm your host, Mr. Eric, joined by my co-host, Mr. Rob. What's going on, sir? Not too much, man. Just uh, try to enjoy a quiet Saturday. Got lucky, found some in the store today. You found some what? Some toilet paper. Oh. <laughs> we already have plenty, but... Just stock up. Trying to stock up. That's something you definitely don't want to run out of. Yeah, for sure. And we are joined by uh, the Countdown Podcast very own Mr. Mike, a.k.a. MJ Book. How's it going, sir? <laughs> Thank you very much. Good to be here again, as always. Uh, love uh, being on here with you guys talking wrestling. <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> I always like when The Miz does that. When he's on commentary, he's always saying wrestling. <laughs> well, The Miz is awesome. Yeah, well, he's awesomely sick right now, so. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've caught up with our coverage of this year's WrestleMania with all everybody being sick. and He's one of them, obviously, with all the changes and the you know, Roman dropping out and all the all the craziness. You try to keep up, but you know, stuff keeps coming out. I mean, it's kind yeah. of hard to keep up, almost. Yeah, it's it's, it's a daily thing. So it's, it's it's rough. But we are here to talk about uh, one of the better WrestleManias in the last ten years, uh, WrestleMania Thirty. From the, the Silver Dome in New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to why we're laughing. I think we're all laughing at the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll wait. We'll get to it. So, I actually did a little more deep dive on this one because I had the time. I'm not at work, so I I went back and watched the, the press conference from New York. I don't know if y'all remember that that week of Mania 30 where they had the press conference in New York with uh, Batista, Orton, Triple H, Daniel Bryan, John Cena, Stephanie. There's a few other people there, but those are the only people that spoke. And that was when like Batista did his little rant on the stage where he kind of went to one side because the crowd was dead. Like no, they didn't cheer. For, they didn't even cheer for Daniel Bryan at the conference. So uh, I went back and watched that, and I even watched the whole kickoff show, the whole two hours. Wow. <laughs> well, I did it. I actually did it. I broke it up. So I watched that and the kickoff on Thursday, and then I watched the pay per view yesterday. So I broke it up because it was a lot. I mean, the press conference was forty five minutes and a two hour kickoff. It's a lot. So, I'm, be- I'm betting neither one of you did that. <laughs> How's it go, Rob? I'm still- <laughs> huh? I'm still working, so I-, I'm- I still have a full-time job. I'm just doing it from home, so I'm still limited on my time. Right, right, right. Um, so, I-, I went ahead and, like I said, watched the kickoff, and... The panel kind of switched up. So, actually, the host was Josh Matthews. And it started with him, Mick Foley, Booker T, and Shawn Michaels. And then they had Shawn Merriman on there. They had Jimmy Hart, Trish Stratus, and Alex Riley as, like, special guests that would, you know, pop in. Like, the first hour was just video packages and talking. And then the second hour was the first match of the night. It was... The Fatal Four Way Tag Team Championship match featuring the Real Americans versus Los Matadores with uh, El Torito, Ry Baxel, which was Ry Back and Curtis Axel, and and the Usos, the champions. Um, so I don't know if either of you, we both probably didn't watch this match, so I'll just go ahead and. Talk about it a little bit. Um, this was this was when you know the real Americans were so over, and I don't think you could have um, 
God, what's his name? The manager. Zeb Coulter. Remember Zeb Coulter with all those, you know, those comments he used to make? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you can make those comments nowadays. Because he was like, I think half of you swam over here and something like that. Something to that degree. And for the real Americans, he was going, they were going to win this match for the real, you know, born and bred Americans. Something to that, you know, effect. I was like, yeah, you couldn't say that now. Um, Cornette says it. <laughs> well, that's why he's not on TV. But, uh, in any event, so it was a tag team elimination match. So, um, the Real Americans eliminated two tag teams. They eliminated uh, Diego with the Patriot Lock. That was Swagger. And then Cesaro beat Ryback with the uppercut and a neutralizer. And then it came down to Usos and Real Americans. These two... They should just have these two have a match because they went at it. I mean, they even got this is awesome chance. Uh, the finish was a little lackluster. It was just a Uso splash to retain. They pinned Cesaro, and the Usos retained. Uh, I thought it was a good kickoff match. I gave it a B minus for the lackluster finish and a few missteps, uh, but nothing, nothing you couldn't overlook. And then after the match, the Real Americans break up with Swagger uh, attacking Cesaro. And then Cesaro swinging Swagger. So that was the end of the Real Americans. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I just have to take your word for it, man. I'm sure I watched that match back in the day, but I didn't watch it this time. (laughs) It's sad that the tag team division dropped to a pre-show. That's sad. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, I mean it's almost like that now. I mean, last year they had what the uh, the yeah the Raw Tag Team Championships. Yeah, they were on the, the kickoff. That's when the it was Zack Ryder and uh, Kurt Hawkins won. Just proof those belts just don't mean anything anymore. <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> you all right over there, Mister Rob? Been drinking too much. With you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, if that was the case, we'd never have a podcast. <laughs> well, well, we'd have a more inter- we'd have a, a different one. Yeah, um, we're probably gonna have a different one on WrestleMania when the Firefly Funhouse match happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't hear you guys as well, but we'll make it work. All right, just let me know. Um. So then we had the show kicked off. Uh, we had the pyro and the video package. No, Amer- this was um, one of the few main is they didn't have anybody singing uh, America the Beautiful. I, I noticed that. Uh, this went straight in and, and then they introduced Hulk Hogan, of course. Uh, I mean, this is back when we were still like, okay with him. Uh <laughs> And Hulk Hogan did his thing, and that's where we got the Silver Dome comment because he was so glad to be here in the Super Dome, bro- Silver Dome Brothers. And he said it not once, but twice. Yeah, he didn't catch it the first time. The crowd reminded him the second time. The second time, Hogan, yeah. master of the mic. Yeah. Um. So then. He corrected himself, but then Stone Cold interrupted him, and he, you know, he cracked at him. He's like, good to be back here in the Silver Dome. <laughs> and, you know, obviously it's the Super Dome. I mean, could you easily mess up, mess up the two? I guess you could, but. He should know where he is. <laughs> yeah. Come you, on, man. <laughs> you got to do better than that if you're going to be out there hosting the show. And then last but not least was The Rock coming out and cutting his normal. They all kind of did their shtick pretty much here in the opening. Uh, you know, getting on Hogan about the Silver Dome. You know, it was cool. Uh, this whole moment was like, it's kind of one of those moments where you can only really get excited the first time you see it. I did get goosebumps a little bit just because I hadn't seen it in a while. But that 
first time because we, we didn't know if the show was going to open that way. Um, and I think I knew Austin was in New Orleans, but I had no idea The Rock was. So um, just, you know, quick reaction on the opening and, you know, what you all think. Uh, I'll start with you, Mike. Um, as far as the opening, uh, it, it was, it was nice to see Austin and, and the rock come out there. Uh, uh, Mr. Rob knows I'm definitely not a Hogan fan, never have been. So uh, I get what he's done for the, for the business. So I understand him being there. Uh, I think it was Bradshaw that said, uh, the Mount Rushmore of wrestling, depending on your individual choice. I could understand people saying that. So for the business for WrestleMania, big moment. Yep. Mr. Ryan. I have to agree. With, yeah, I agree with that for sure. Say what you want to about Hogan. He, without him, maybe we don't have WrestleMania. That's just the truth, whether you like him or you don't like him. And then Stone Cold is arguably the most popular WWE superstar of all time. And then The Rock, we all know The Rock is a legend, the biggest movie star in the world. And all three of them in the ring together, it was... And absolutely iconic. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be a quick show because we only got seven matches on the main card to talk about. So uh, that's a that's a short main. Well, it should have been a short main. Yeah. Not a lot of matches. And first up is Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. Uh, number one contenders match. Uh, the winner will go on to, to the main event to face Batista and Randy Orton. For the at the time the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, we only had one title at this time. So that always should be. But um, did you all see the meme that or the the tweet that Triple H put out talking about this uh, his outfit for this match? I think I sent it to you, Rob. Was this something he sent recently or yeah. back then? Yeah, he took a shot at at uh at, at uh Deontay Wilder, saying that oh. his 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 uh, outfit was forty some pounds and you know <laughs> wore out his wore out his legs and that's why he lost to Daniel Bryan. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that's Triple H, man. That he's a game for so many reasons. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually cracked up when I saw it. I was like, that's a good trouble job there. Because, I mean, the outfits even look identical. He deserves to be made fun of. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. And then, uh, did you all recognize the handmaidens sitting next to Oh, yeah, I was going to say something about that. I oh. recognized one of them. Oh, go ahead. Who'd you, who'd you recognize? Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte was on the right. <laughs> right. And did you, did you peep the other two? Uh, the other, uh, they look familiar, but I couldn't figure out who they were. But Charlotte stuck out. What about you, Rob? Yeah, the other two were Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss. Yep. Ah. Uh, yep. So Alexa, Alexa Bliss was kind of seated, and she had the, uh, the, uh, I don't know what it's called, the big glass. I don't know. The goblet. She had the goblet. But they all took his armor off. Cool entrance. Um, and then, then Charlotte would use his entrance four years later at WrestleMania 34 when she faced Asuka. So. And then Daniel Bryan comes out. And, you know, I thought this was a great way to kick off the show. Um, this is the first time Triple H has opened a mania, to my knowledge. It's Maybe. probably been a while. When he faced Warrior, was was that match first? Uh, that she might have been early, maybe middle. But it wasn't on first. So it was the first time he went on first. But it made sense because whoever won was going to have to go through hell later on in the triple threat. So it just made sense. I thought this was a wrestling clinic. Two technicians going at it, you know. Uh, the height disadvantage was was very obvious. Uh, <laughs> legitimately six four Triple H and about five nine Daniel Bryan. Uh, but 
man, some of the moves in this match they had me work like in retrospect now now that I'm watching it. It's almost like it's no wonder Daniel Bryan has so many head and neck injuries and problems. I mean, Jesus Christ, you got many times to get dropped on his head in this match alone. Um he did the moonsault off the top turn buck on the Triple H to the outside. He missed most of Triple H doing that move. Triple H did a uh, like a backdrop on Daniel Bryan on the ring apron, and it's like that's his, that was more so his tailbone and his back. Um, and then that uh, Hunter had both of Daniel Bryan's arms locked and did like this over the back suplex, and Daniel just landed around his head and neck area. I'm just like man. It, these the, all these hits to the head is just it's just no wonder. Uh, the crowd was really into this match. Every move it seemed like they were just they just really wanted Daniel Bryan to win. They were just almost worried that he wouldn't win because I mean it is Triple H and he does pull that, you know, that crap. But I, I didn't think they would get this far after all the build up and then screw Daniel Bryan. Um. Daniel Bryan hit a nice little sunset flip, almost like a Canadian destroyer off the top turnbuckle. Bryan was firing up, getting ready to hit the running knee, but then Triple H counters with the spine buster. Oh, no, a nasty clothesline. He did hit a spine buster and pedigree, but Bryan kicked out, and then Bryan does eventually come back and hit the running knee and gets the pin and the win and beats Triple H, and he will go on. To the triple threat later on in the night. Uh, I gave this match an A. I thought it was awesome. It started a little slow and methodic, but that's a Triple H match. But the fact that the crowd was on every single move. Psh, man, the beating that Brian took in this match. And even, I'll get to the post-match in a bit, but I'm just going to grade it for now. I gave it an A. Uh, Rob, what'd you think? I gave it a B. It was a good match from a technical standpoint, and it told a good story. But I thought it was kind of long. And oh, yeah. I thought that, yeah, and I just thought that, I thought the crowd and the energy that Daniel brought to the match is, is what elevated it. Uh, the match itself was just B quality, but, but the crowd reaction to hanging on everything Brian did and, and rooting for him to win, to me, is is what made it seem a little bit better than it was, but still a solid B for me. All right. Um, I agree with Rob. Uh, I gave it a B. Um, it, it told a, a great story of uh, uh, trying to topple over the authority. Daniel Bryan, uh, Stephanie McMahon playing just uh, just healing it out alongside the ring, talking her smack to Daniel. Um, yeah, I meant to talk about Daniel that, how Bryan. heelish, how heelish uh, Stephanie yeah, uh, was. Uh, she's just great at that stuff. Uh, Daniel took it a, uh, an enormous beating just that night. <laughs> but that match was just, it definitely carried the drama. Definitely a good match. I, on a side note, I appreciated seeing the San Francisco 49er flag out in the crowd. But uh, <laughs> it was it was a very entertaining match. Uh, definitely kept our attention. Uh crowd seemed to be in it it was a good b only you would spot that flag um, uh okay but uh it was in the third it was in the third row man <laughs> i didn't see it but anyway uh that was just for because rob mentioned it that was the longest match of the night it's a long match by the second longest match was brock lesnar and undertaker which we'll get to. But this was the longest match at 20, 26 minutes. After that, we got a little reprieve with the shortest match on the night. Uh, the Shield, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins versus Kane and the New Age Outlaws. You know, I thought this actually was a good break. Because like Mr. Rob just said, I mean, that long of a match, you don't want to have another 10, 15-minute match right behind it. So I think a nice, good squash 
was the way to go. And you don't want the Shield to be going and struggling against the old ass New Age Outlaws and old man Kane. Um, this was mainly just a showcase of Roman Reigns. I, I, honestly, he got majority of the offense. That was very clear what this was about. A double, triple power bomb for the win. And the Shields go on to do their thing. I just gave it a C. I mean, just to, it's just, it was just a squash match, but it was to propel the Shield. It did what it's supposed to do, and the crowd even popped for the, for the ending. And it brought back some good memories for me, too. I mean, Shield, Shield was the thing back in the day. So, they got a C. Mr. Mike, I see, I saw your face, so I'm curious what you think. <laughs> Uh, this match was just, com I get what they were trying to do, for, you, know, you know, promote the Shield, specifically Roman, uh, but this match was just not necessary. Uh, this was the perfect go get yourself a beer, go to the bathroom type of a thing, and uh, that's pretty much what it ended up doing. Uh, so, sorry, I gave it an F. You gave I this an F? Hold on. I gave it an F. I was bored. I was bored. I can't stand squash matches at WrestleMania. I just can't stand them. So this this was just pointless. It was worthless. Like you said, bringing out the old ass outlaws, even though I love them, bringing out corporate Kane in his khakis. I I I just didn't need this match. It was boring. It was worthless. It didn't need to happen. They could have put that on the pre-show. So it was an F for me. I'm probably being overcritical. Well, and I'll let you go in a second, Rob, but the only reason why I'm shocked at that is because of a match that takes place later that I thought, that I know for sure, I'm, I'm at least I'm going to shit on. I don't know about you all, but... Mm, I'm pretty sure I know which one you're thinking. Yeah, but go ahead, Mr. Rob. Well, I gave it a C. Even though I felt it was, I didn't feel like it was a squash match. I, I can see why you would categorize it as that, though, because it was a quick match. And you knew that if the New Age Outlaws and Kane had no chance of winning, it was just three young guys beating up three old guys. But I thought the double power bomb at the end, uh, and I just thought it was a good showcase for the Shield. You noticed at that time Roman wasn't getting booed out of the building. People were all about the Shield and all about Roman at that time funny how things turn out now but yeah i gave it a c not good not awful just average all right <laughs> so ugh, this this segment made me cringe because it was just so bad but it got saved oh. at the end oh. the backstage slam city segment with sergeant slaughter and jim duggan playing with action figures <laughs> uh, and then came uh like this uh i don't know some representative came in and took it away because ted dibiase bought it and he comes in he's laughing doing his million dollar man stick and then in comes ricky steamboat in his karate kid outfit and um uh, once they finish all that crap uh Ron Simmons enters. <laughs> Damn! I actually thought Ron should have showed up later in another backstage segment that was worse than this one, if you can believe. They didn't need to do these. I get it, bringing back the old guys, you know, giving them a little shine, but it just, to me, it doesn't make them look good, especially, you know, people like you know, later it's a later it's a later segment. But when I saw Paul Orndorff, and you just see him now, how he looks now, how he versus how he used to look, it's just like, ah, mm mm. But you got like seeing. I, I like seeing those things sometimes. I like seeing some of those. It takes me back to my childhood. I don't know if Rob agrees with that, but uh, I like sometimes seeing those guys. Sometimes it's a little goofy, but I like sometimes seeing them. I don't know. Ricky, Ricky looks good. I think it's generational. I think it's generational. I didn't mind seeing some of those guys. I thought they could have written a better segment for them. But 
we're celebrating 30 years of WrestleMania, so obviously you're trying to bring out some of the forerunners. I mean, Orndorff, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves because he was in a later segment, but he was in the main event of the very first WrestleMania. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. him and Roddy Piper, actually all four of those guys we're going to talk about, they were the main event. So that's pretty significant when you're celebrating 30 years. But at the same time, I just wish they gave them something better to do. Right. Right. So then we had the Andre the Joint, Andre the Giant. Sorry. Memorial Battle Royal, the inaugural Andre the Giant. And these are just some of the people that I recognize, some of the names that, you know, hadn't seen in a while. Uh, Great Kali, David Otunga was in there. Cody Rhodes was in there. Darren Young, all of 3MB. The infamous Brad Maddox. And we, we know why he's infamous. I don't need to say why. Uh, Brodus Clay. The, the uh, what was his name? The uh, Freakosaurus. The Freakosaurus. Fandango. Xavier Woods. Dolph Ziggler. Cesaro. Damian Sandow. Big E Langston. Uh, obviously Big Show. Santino. Goldust. R-Truth. Mark Henry. I said Mark Henry, didn't I? Darren Young and uh, Titus. Those were most of the ones I got. I'm sure I did. I didn't get everybody, but it, I thought that this first one. Did you mention? Did I mention who? Kofi. No, I didn't mention Kofi. It's funny you say that because I was actually nervous for him because he went over that top turnbuckle and like landed flat back on the outside, but he was able to keep that one foot on the the bottom step. And I guess they kind of took away from one of his Royal Rumble, you know, uh, stunts. But still a cool move. But he got back in just to get thrown out. Uh, pretty much all of New Day was in there, but they weren't the New Day yet. That's why I said, you know, he was Big E was still Big E Langston. Xavier Woods was on his own and Kofi was still his original character. Who else was in there? Did I say Rey Mysterio? Damien. I don't think he did. Yeah, Rey Mysterio. Yeah, Damien Sandow. Miz. Miz. He had a different haircut back then. Um, yeah, he had the slick hair. <laughs> what was... uh? Oh, the other... Uh, it was. Uh, I can't think of the... There was another masked wrestler in there. Sin Cara. Sin Cara. And the one I'm trying to think of right now, uh, oh, Alberto Del Rio. He was in there, too. Alberto, yeah. Yeah. So pretty much it came down to Cesaro and Big Show. Correct me if, oh, no, we weren't together. But I remember when this originally happened, you know, Cesaro picking up Big Show. And not just picking him up and just kind of slightly slammed. He held Big Show and threw him over the top rope and won. Single-handedly, the pound-for-pound pound strongest man in WWE, hands down, is Cesaro. Uh, he proves it. He's proved it over and over again. I think three weeks before this, me and Mr. Rob saw. We went to Raw on Mr. Rob's birthday before this WrestleMania, and we saw Cesaro catch Big E in midair, impress him into a slam. Um, just insane. The guy's insane. So, your very first ever Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner is Cesaro. And we all thought, you know, this would lead to, like, world championship matches and championships and main event status. Not quite to be, but we're just going to stick with that match alone. Um, what did I grade it? I gave it a B plus. I thought that that... That last move by Cesaro elevated it. Um, I didn't expect anybody to pick up Big Show that way. And, uh, yeah, I gave it a B plus. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Uh, I love watching Royal Rumble matches. It's a di Royal Rumble matches, a lot of the wrestlers say they're the most difficult matches to do because anything can happen in there. Uh, chaos can ensue. Uh, Cesaro 
picking up Big Show, walking a few steps to the ropes to fling him out. That's just that's just amazing strength. That's just he, Cesaro is just a superstar that I I still hope that the WD will do something with that guy. He's he's just an amazing athlete. Um, this was it was an entertaining uh. Uh, Battle Royal, uh, I gave it definitely a B. It was entertaining. It There wasn't a whole lot of low points. It was nice seeing Drew McIntyre back in the day. Uh, but it was a B. What'd you think, Rub, Mr. Yeah, Rub? I would C plus on it. I'm not that crazy about these Battle Royals, but it was interesting to go back and, and look at the talent that was in WWE at the time. The match itself... To me, only had a few good moments. The Kofi moment where he was thrown over the top row, but a foot on the stairs and then get back into the ring. And then what we talked about, Cesaro picking up Big Show, just incredible. And then, of course, also doing his spin that he does. Did that with Kofi. Must have spun Kofi about 25 or 30 Oh, yeah, times. man, I forgot about that. I so got dizzy it, watching that. For me, that made it entertaining enough. To- so you gave it a C+. Yeah. Plus? Yeah, I get it. Yep. Um, let's see. And then after that, we got John Cena versus Bray Wyatt for the first time. Um, I got to be honest, the best part about this match was Bray Wyatt's entrance. Uh that band, and I tried to find the name of the band that played him to the ring. I couldn't find it. Um, but I thought that you did all of that. And you built Bray up, and then you had that awesome entrance. I mean, people still talk about that entrance to this day. I think it's still, it, 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 it still holds its value. And for him not to go over, and then how they just, over time, wasted the character. I thought it was the most original character they had come up with in years. And then they just, they just ruined it. They should have never broke them up. The match they had, that first match they had with the Shield, still is a classic. It's a shame it got wasted. To me, that should have been a Mania match. That should have been the Mania match uh, instead of this, instead of the match the Shield got. Can you just imagine the Wyatts? And hell, they could have even done a rematch at Mania, and it still would have been better than what either got because at the end of the day the reason why this match was not as good as it could have been was because of John Cena and I get it he's a draw he sells merch he can talk on the mic he can't wrestle at all he's so stiff and it, it just shows and it's almost like when he wrestles someone he's, he doesn't want to give them too much he won't sell all the way, the moves all the way. He won't lay flat. And I, I notice these things, little nuanced things about him when he wrestles people, certain people. So, um, but the the stuff that Bray was doing, like the spider walk, that was, you know, that was awesome. The, the beginning of the match when he's just taunting John Cena, when he gives John Cena the, the chair at the end and tell him to finish him, uh, the, all that was great. Nothing about my grade is about Bray Wyatt. It's all about Cena. And especially the fact that that man won the match. <laughs> so, um, for that, I, I gave it a C. And that is to be nice to Bray. Uh, Rob, I, I'm curious what you think because I know you're kind of 50 50 on Cena. So, I'm curious your thoughts on this match. Well, I went C. Plus. But like you, it wasn't because of anything John Cena did. John Cena was typical John Cena. Bray Wyatt, the character he was playing and and the whole thing he was trying to do, bring Cena to the darkness, Bray carried this match. He was the only thing about it that made it even the least bit interesting. And while I was disappointed, in the outcome, I thought Bray did such a good job that I went ahead and gave it a C plus. But Cena did not need the rub in this match. Bray did, and it was a mistake not to have him get over. And I think it's hurt his career. Yeah, I I couldn't agree with you more. I gave this a C. 
Bray Wyatt is simply put one of the best in the history of that business, best characters, so original in an industry that seems to keep copying or just, just Bray was so original, perfectly would have been whenever Taker was finally going to bow out, he was going to take that spot. It, it, it was just so perfect. He was great on the mic. He was able to move in the ring. For such a big guy, what he's able to do in there is, is just quite amazing. He's, he's, a, he's just an athlete. And to see him fall to one of the worst finishers in history, that <laughs> stupid AA, it, 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 this was during that time when Cena was just not giving it up to a lot of people. And this was a crime for Bray. I mean, Br- this would start the three matches, but you knew Cena was going to win out. Uh, this was a C. Poor Bray. The victim. Yeah, I'm with you. I actually was kind of crowning him as a new Undertaker before a lot of people were. Because I thought, oh, this is their replacement. The whole Wyatt family thing. And, you know, Undertaker had the ministry back in the day. I mean, it was... If they would just kept that slow build <clears throat> and just took their time. And the problem is you, you you can't come out and say stuff and then lose. And they just did over and over and over again with Bray. To the fact that he had to come back with a completely different character. It is what it is. Up next, we got the the Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony. Well, not ceremony, but they just brought, you know, the part of the show they bring out the Hall of Famers. So we had Jake the Snake, Roberts, Mr. T, Paul Bear, rest in peace, Carlos Colon, I'll pray for his forehead, Lita, Reza Ramon, and uh, one of Mike's favorites, the Ultimate Warrior. A really good Hall of Fame class. I was always worried about Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, dealt with a lot of drug issues. So did Warrior, for that fact, for that matter. But um, it was just more documented, the stuff about Scott Hall and DDP having to go kind of get him and make him stay with him for a while and then send him to rehab. Just a good. It's just good to see everybody that, you know, one of the few, well, it's crazy because this is one of the few classes that, at least during the Hall of Fame ceremony and WrestleMania, everybody was alive. Unfortunately, a few days later, after Mania, in a poetic manner, so to, so to speak, the uh, warrior did pass away. It was almost as if he knew he didn't have much time left. It's just ironic the next night on Raw... He comes out, he cuts that promo, and the next day he's gone. I mean, I remember that time, like, are you serious? This has to be a joke. He was just on TV yesterday. And, yeah, heart attack. I think we, uh, I don't know if y'all are ready to address the, uh, oh, no. the biggest elephant in the room. Uh. We need to pause for a moment of silence. (laughs) All right. So we got the Beast versus the Streak. The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. Um, Now, were you two watching this match together? Yeah. Yeah, we, I can't think of the last time, Rob, you and I haven't watched a WrestleMania. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know I wasn't there for this one, because I had a party at my, my place. I just wasn't sure. But, uh, (laughs) you talk about, I'm not, I'm not going to get away to finish this yet, but you talk about people that are casual fans, that see a moment and get it, 
this was one of them. Brock Lesnar comes out first, and honestly, he hasn't looked that jacked since this match. <laughs> it was humongous. And then Taker comes out. I like this entrance. They had the they had the uh, the twenty one caskets lined up. Well, twenty two caskets lined up because one had Brock's name on it, and it was open, and they even set it on fire. Or Taker set it on fire. And so the entrances were good. You know what you expect. But the beginning of this match. I give credit to the New Orleans crowd. Because it was boring. I mean it was kind of painful to sit through. I don't know how you all felt. Just about the beginning of the match. Before they kind of got really intense. It was was kind of dull. I definitely agree. Very slow paced, but that wasn't surprising. Be, given the Undertaker's age, we know at this point he, he's still a decent worker, but but he's older. Brock is not really known as being the greatest worker either, so the slow pace didn't surprise me. Yeah. Mike, what do you think? Just like the beginning of the match, I, it was a little awkward for me because I thought that I was just used to his matches with Triple H, his matches with Sean. He just had wrestled CM Punk the last year. And all those matches kind of started right away. Bing, bang, boom. And this one didn't. Well, I I don't know if you were going to go over this, but there was a reasoning a little bit as to what happened in the beginning. Taker got concussed. So and that I was didn't looking help. for that. I was looking for the moment when he got concussed, and I couldn't. He, I couldn't find it. He doesn't even know, but uh, he got concussed. Which I'm not saying the match would have ended up being better, but that didn't help because <laughs> you could see he was very lethargic, and that made the match because you couldn't see. You couldn't tell what was going on. It, it was a weird. It was just a weird match overall. Yeah, and I can tell you now. After, this is just oh, go ahead, Rob. speculation on my part, but early in the match, and suplex to take her, and to me, yep. the thing, well, I was just saying the the landing on that German didn't look too good to me. Whether or not it concussed Taker, I don't know, but the landing didn't look good to me. Could be it. That could be it. Um, there was, I would say, seventy five percent of the match. It was kind of slow, but I, I give the New Orleans crowd credit. They didn't boo. They didn't say this is boring. They, they they hung in there. But the match does pick up when Brock hits the first F5. And then Taker comes back with a choke slam. But that was when I noticed like Taker was really out of it. Like him dragging himself to the ropes. And he just he can't even pull himself up. And he does get Brock into Hell's Gate. The first time. And Brock picks him up, kind of power bombs and gets out. And Taker drags himself to the corner. And this is when I knew he was out of it. Because Brock had to drag him out and kind of put himself in position for the second Hell's Gate. And I don't know if y'all caught that, but I did. Mm-hmm. So he yeah, was kind of yeah. covering for Taker a little bit there. If you're, yeah, the av- if you're a casual viewer, you won't catch it. But, you know. So then Brock hit the Kimura lock. I don't think Taker was able to reverse it. Uh, Taker uh, is it starts doing old school, but Brock catches him, hits the second F five, and then we get man Taker and Lesnar. Lesnar's on top turnbuckle, pounding away on Taker, and and then uh, we got the last ride, <laughs> more like the last fall. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um I feel bad. I mean, this match almost brought me to Goldberg Taker's territory as far oh, as Undertaker is concerned. He looked bad, man. <laughs> oh man. And he uh he does it, he does get his wits about him, I guess somewhat, because he's able to hit Brock with a tombstone. Brock kicks out. He goes for a second. And this is to show how strong Brock Lesnar is. He not only counters 
and flips over, sw switches his weight with Taker on his shoulders, and then hits the third F5. And then one, two, three. And I, as long as I've been watching wrestling before NXT, before AEW, if you hit your finisher for the third time, that's it. It's lights out. It's game over. So I thought, oh, that's it. He just lost. So, But even though I thought that, I didn't want it to happen. And then when it did, literally everybody in my house, they had at least 10 people in my house, everybody stopped what they were doing. At least until they, they panned the camera over to the black guy in the front row whose face was just <laughs> a mess. <laughs> but, man, I, I, I it, it sucked the wind out of the house for quite a bit. I mean, it took me a while to really even realize what just happened. Like, was it a mistake? Did they, are they going to restart? The, like, all these questions. Are they going to restart the match? Was that a referee mistake? But then when you saw the graphic, 21-1, you knew it was real. And then they announced it. Yeah, Brock Lesnar won the match, and you hear his music play. And I have never seen so many faces. Like, you would thought Taker died. That That's what, I mean, the faces... People were crying. People were just speak, hands over their faces. I mean, everything. You name it, the reaction was there. Um, but me personally, um, I went from immediate shock to laughing at the guy in the front row to back to shock. Because I just didn't believe it. And I was just kind of, I had to go take a shot of tequila. Because <laughs> I was like, I, I, I. I it just it just took me out of the it took me out of the out of the show until the main event. I was kind of having to distract myself. I, like, I don't even believe that just happened, but it did. And I'm not gonna ramble on any longer, Mike. You being the probably the biggest Taker fan I know, <coughs> go on, spill it, man. Oh boy. Okay. Taker is. One of my all-time favorites. He's easily number two. That I don't even have to think about that. He's number two. Seeing him like this was just heartbreaking. Because at the time, didn't know he was concussed. So you were thinking, is he old? Is this it? Is this time? And the match itself... Now hindsight is, you know... 2020, you know he was concussed, so now you know why it looked so bad. But I think it was the gravest mistake ending that streak. I get why they did it to propel Brock. I get it, but they just—I just don't think that's something they should have done. Just, just let the guy have the streak for Pete's sake. Uh, the match itself, because he was concussed, got an F from me. But this was—it was, it uh, was just so heartbreaking. Just, I, 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 I hated it. This WrestleMania was hard to watch <laughs> because of this match coming up. It took me a while just to get to that match because I didn't want to see it. <laughs> I just didn't want to see it. Uh, it's, it just broke my heart. I get why they did it. I truly do. And story-wise, for the business, I get it. And that doesn't happen without Taker agreeing to it. But doesn't mean I wanted to see it. <laughs> that it, It's just me being in such a huge taker, Mark. Yeah. Yep. It was hard for me to continue watching part of it. I was so shocked and so disappointed at taker losing. I never thought I would see it. I thought taker would always have that streak. And, and it tore me up to see him lose. At the time, I didn't think Brock was the guy who deserved to be the one to break the streak. As time has passed, I understand why Brock was chosen. 
My understanding is that Vince made this decision only a few hours before the show. The match itself, if I'm reading it, I give it a C because it just it, it would it, it just wasn't that great of a match. It's the shocking moment at the end that sticks out. It's all of the shock faces. But for me, it's a... Look, while it's a memorable moment, it's it's not a fond memory. It's not a happy memory. Yeah. um, Man... I gave this match a B minus. And it was literally because of the the shock value. Every mania is supposed to leave you with something. You're supposed to talk about the show at least one match, one moment. Well, I don't know since that match that there's been a bigger mania moment other than maybe you could throw, I don't know about bigger, but maybe you could throw like, you know, right behind it, you could say, well, the first ever women's main event or Kofi Kingston's run to finally become champion. But outside of that, I mean, or you could throw maybe Seth Rollins cashing in money in the bank for the first time. I mean, those are moments you think about each mania. At 31, you think about Seth Rollins. 32, I don't know what you think about with WrestleMania 32. WrestleMania 33, maybe you think about Reigns and and Taker. Maybe you think about Goldberg and Brock Lesnar finally having a good match. The Hardys return. The Har- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hardys return was the biggest pop of the night. Uh, 34, you had Ronda Rousey's awesome debut. You had the Charlotte Oscar match. The Shinsuke AJ match did not live up to what it was supposed to be, but... No, it didn't. Um, and then, like I said, I already spoke about last year, so... That was that. Um, well, one thing real quick that I forgot. Rob and I, you, you, you and I went to WrestleMania 25, I think it was. 26. And that was, 26. Or, was it 26, 27? It, I can't remember which one it was. It was one of the, I have the hat, but I can't find it. Uh, Taker was facing Sean. And talking to people around, a lot of them were saying, if Sean wins, we're leaving. They did not want to see Sean. And this is Sean Michaels uh, facing Taker. Taker just... He's the con. They say it, he's the conscience of the WWE. People just do not want to see that guy lose, especially at WrestleMania. So it's. Uh. I was about ready to cry at this next match, um, uh. and this is why I was kind of shocked that you gave the Shield match a F because, Lordy, Lordy, Lord. The Vicky Guerrero Divas Invitational. AJ Lee versus Natalia versus Nikki and Brie Bella versus Summer Rae, Naomi and Cameron, Tamina, Alicia Fox, Emma, Oksana, and Eva Marie. I think Layla was in this match too. Yeah, she was. This was absolute trash. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> uh, AJ Lee won by submission, tapping out Naomi. F. Rob, say something. I don't know what what the hell you could possibly have thought about this match, especially following Taker and and, and Lesnar. Well, I couldn't go F, but I did give it a D, only because I just felt bad for what they were doing with the women at this time. These women didn't have a chance. There was no talent in the ring, just eye candy, and that's why it was bad. Uh, I definitely understand giving it an F, but I did give it a D because the women are placed in such a horrible situation. There's just no winning in that situation, and there is definitely no talent. There was, well, 
AJ actually was talented. Uh, but there, there just was nothing in that match. It was just the women were always placed in these situations back then when they knew that the crowd was going to be dead. Oh, let's just put the women out there in the ring. So I did feel bad for him, but I did give him actually, it was a D minus. I take it back, D minus. Uh, it was so close to an F, but I felt bad for the women. I felt bad for them. They were in an impossible situation. I mean, I get it. And yeah, they did that a lot. But the match was terrible. I mean, there was no real high spot. To me, it was hard hitting. I'm trying to think what I even remember remember from the match. Other than Tamina kicking everybody's face off and, and, and AJ Lee hitting the, the uh, Black Widow at the end. I don't remember. I don't remember much. And I just watched it yesterday. <laughs> But, okay. And then from there, we get the other backstage moment. Featuring Mean Gene and Hulk Hogan, which they should have had this a little sooner, I think. Maybe maybe do this right after Taker and bring out Hogan again and maybe calm the crowd down a little bit. But uh, pretty much it was the original... Participants in the first main event of WrestleMania. Mean Gene, Hogan, Piper, and the sickly looking Paul Orndorff. Is he still alive? Yes, he's still alive. Okay. He didn't look good. I believe so. Well, he doesn't do the steroids anymore. <laughs> well, Hogan doesn't either, but he still looks like Hogan. Uh, Hogan was probably getting more calls to wrestle than Paul. Either way, you got Mr. T coming in and, and Roddy Piper. I don't know. I, I like seeing I, I, I like seeing Roddy. You know, it's 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 sad Rest about him. Peace. Yeah, it's it's really sad. I know you you got to meet him, right, Mike? Oh yeah, got got to meet him at the same time, Rob. You were meeting another uh, Hall of Famer that would pass just a few days later. <laughs> I was about to say who went first? They were at the same time. But I think Piper went like a few days first, yeah. and then I think it was uh, Dusty went like a few days after. Yeah, I know they were long days apart. It was weird. <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. But at least I, he got to meet Dusty. I got to meet Piper. It was awesome. Yeah. And that was at the access to WrestleMania 26, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then the, and then they actually did show in the crowd. So they showed Bruno San Martino, Bob Backlund, Bret Hart, Harley Race, Dusty Rhodes, Daddy. So but then we got the main event, the triple threat match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Rev Theory played the Viper Randy Orton to the ring. You know, he... I think I would have I would have preferred if uh, Saliva would have played Batista's theme instead. I always wanted to see I always want to see his theme played live. I mean, yeah, yeah, the voices was great, but Randy didn't seem like the right person to do that for. If that makes any sense? Yeah, he's a champ, but anytime Motorhead played Triple H, Triple H came out and he was like pumped up when they played. When Motorhead was there, he was jacked up about it i'm trying to think of other people that not that many people have gotten their theme song played but i'm just saying ray mysterio had (laughs) yeah ray he was pumped up ronda last year she was pumped up it just didn't dx yeah but it yeah it's just i don't know i liked it because i think randy was deserving he was the champ it made sense he just looked awkward that's all and then Batista didn't even get his pyro. That pissed me off. Because uh, I'm guessing because the band was still up there. So they didn't want to set anybody on fire. Again. Again, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me and Mr. Rob were at the uh, WrestleMania where people got burned from uh, Undertaker's pyro. I was actually at the Elimination Chamber when Undertaker got burned by his own pyro. Yeah, I, I don't know if I remember that. Um, they 
I watched that show back. They didn't get it on camera. But I have the video of him actually, the flames engulfing him. And he got like third degree burns off of that. He was pissed. Yeah, that dude probably got fired that night. Yeah. Because <laughs> after that match, he pointed at the, the guy where he was going up the ramp. He point. I mean, you you just see, he's like, I'm kicking your ass <laughs> when we get out of here. But I'm curious to think I'm, what you all think. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Rob. What did you think of the main event? Just overall, any notes you had from the main event? Yeah, I thought it was a decent main event. These three did better work than I thought that they would. And obviously, once again, Daniel was so over at this time. The crowd was so into it. That raised the level of the match. Brian took some big bumps. And the story they told about him going up against the authority, this story had been going on for a while. It culminates in this match. Triple H and Stephanie coming out when it looks like Daniel has some momentum and he may win. Daniel took it in that brutal combination of a um, powerbomb and RKO onto the table. I thought it was a little dramatic putting him on the stretcher, rolling him up the ramp, and then having him jump off the stretcher, run back into the match. So for that, I lowered my grade just a little bit, but this might surprise you guys, but I gave this an A-. Mike? This was definitely an entertaining match. As far as uh, the pay-per-view, for me, this was the best match of the night, which should be the main event. Uh, that that powerbomb RKO combo through the table was just, that was just sick. And again, you said it yourself. This is why Daniel kept getting injured, because he would do stuff like that. But it added to the match. The story was, it was a strong story. Triple H... Having injured him, re-injured that arm, slamming it with the chair against the post. Uh, so he's selling that arm, the beating. Uh, this was just an awesome story. A great, It was a really entertaining match. Uh, I gave it a B plus. Um, and to see Daniel Bryan stand in the ring, holding the belts, the confetti falling. Just, just a great, just a great event. Uh, Rest in peace also to Connor the Crusher, who is right there at ringside. They showed him a couple of times. Uh, just, just a, It was a great way to end the WrestleMania. Yeah, I agree. Um, for all the things that y'all said, um, it was really fast-paced. Uh, the, I can't, I mean, I talked about the, the bumps that Daniel and Bryan took in the match with Triple H. Then he had to go through the table. I don't know who got worse to that, though, because Daniel Bryan went through the table, but Randy Orton did, too. And his back was bleeding after that, because I think he landed on the monitor. He did. But, yeah, hard-hitting match. Daniel Bryan taps out Batista. Uh, I, I still gave it an A. I thought it was the right match to go on last and, and a really good story triple threat match. And, and probably the best send-off that they've done for a Mania in, in, in a long time. It, it didn't feel... It didn't feel uh, like they beat us over the head with it. And I think a lot of that has to do with just the fact that there's only seven matches. Versus last year, there was 16. Ridiculous. I mean, how can you feel anything... If if you see stuff sixteen times, <laughs> uh, I I just don't get it. I mean, it's, it's I don't know. They need to go back to that formula of give us seven relatively. Well, you gave us five probably good matches, five good to great matches, two questionable. Well, one questionable match and one terrible match. They should just go back to that formula. If you don't make the card, you don't make the card. If you can't even make it to the Battle Royal, then you probably shouldn't be in the business. So, that's that. Uh, but I thought this was one of the better Manias in the last 10 years, um, for sure. They streamed this Mania last week on ESPN. Not streamed, but they played it live on ESPN. And it, it, it did the best uh, for ratings. It did the best of the entire day. 
last Sunday. So, and then tomorrow they're airing WrestleMania 32 on ESPN. So they're trying to do stuff for give people something to watch during this Corona stuff because there's nothing. Um, people are used to watching NBA. And matter of fact, next week would have been the first week of the playoffs, the NBA playoffs, and, you know, March Madness. And th- there's just none of that. So that's kind of the other reason why I wanted to do these shows, just to kind of not only keep myself busy, but <laughs> put some content out there for people that do listen. So um, overall, i probably give this, you know, I, I know I put one F on here, so I'll give this a B-plus mania. Definitely worth going back and looking at and and very and maybe memorable for the wrong reasons taker losing obviously kind of cast a dark shadow over this mania it's one i've probably seen that taker match a thousand times just because i just can't i couldn't get over the ending but uh yeah i give it i give the whole card overall b plus mike what'd you think uh i cannot give it that high once uh, once you told, once you guys told me that I was uh, you wanted me to do this, I went and looked at what the main event for this WrestleMania was because after a while they all kind of glue together. And once I saw it was Daniel Bryan and Batista and Randy, I'm like, oh no, this is Taker, but and Brock. <laughs> That's probably the second time I've watched that match, and it hit me just as hard now as it did then even though i knew it was going to happen it's still not something i want to see i gave a couple of f's on this uh if i had to give the whole wrestlemania grade probably a c uh only it probably what saved it is that ending daniel bryan standing there with the belts that's definitely one of the better endings that they've had i would probably put just slightly uh eddie guerrero and um a certain other wrestler. I don't know if you want his name getting uttered. Oh, we, can in there we, we can mention it here. It's okay. Okay. Chris Benoit uh, standing in there as a WWE champion and world heavyweight champion. Just seeing them celebrate. That probably is a little higher. But Daniel standing there, that was just an awesome. He probably saved it to become a C. My overall grade would be a B. There was only one match on the card that I thought was really bad. The rest of them were at least average, and a couple of them were great. Obviously, the taker moment, taker losing, is a moment none of us who watch wrestling will ever, ever forget. I thought the Hall of Fame inductees all were deserving inductees. And then the tragedy surrounding this WrestleMania the ultimate warrior dying two days after this event, Connor the Cleese succumbing to cancer just a couple of weeks after this event, Batista coming back, and I think WWE's intention to have him be the face and maybe even win at Mania, but the Yes Movement taking over, and us wrestling fans worried would WWE let Daniel get over? That storyline coming into this Mania is what made this mania what it was and the two matches that daniel participated in there was no louder crowd response than in those two matches daniel carried this wrestlemania and he was so over it it it, it was it was it was incredible yep yep all right that is gonna do it for now um i think the next show, well, I don't know. Probably, we probably won't do another show until next weekend. Quote unquote <laughs> WrestleMania, if you want to call it that. Oh, oh boy. Uh, two nights. Night. Too big for one night. Um, so we're getting, I don't know if you guys know this, but Comcast, Comcast got the nerve. So they're for their pay per view. So if you want to buy Saturday night, it's thirty nine ninety nine. <laughs> And they're out of their mind. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Sunday. Don't tell me this is worse. Sunday is sixty nine ninety nine. Oh, they are out of their minds. What? 
Or you WWE just, Network. Right. Uh, or you just go on the network no and way. pay for it. <laughs> Ninety hundred dollars? See, and I really think you're doing that on purpose. Really? Why spend? A, you're talking a hundred bucks. Talking a hundred bucks with the network for free for for the first month. Yeah. Come on. But you know, some people say I don't know. I, I guess they just put it out there for the suckers. I don't know. Those are some serious suckers. <laughs> <laughs> that better be having a party with like. 10, 15 people there. With, with a cover <laughs> at the door. Yeah, cover at the door. <laughs> that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. So I guess they're they're counting on the second night being the, Not gonna happen. the more meaningful night. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So no pre-show. We're just going to cover night one. Night two, and that's it. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens. I'm very curious. They've shot all these matches already, so because I guess Orlando is, I guess this week Orlando is putting out that they're locked down, so they tried to get all the all of Mania, the Raw after Mania shot, and. I think the SmackDown, but after that, I don't think they have anything. So, they'll be curious to see how they move forward after Mania. Uh, but until then, um, make sure you all go ahead and go follow uh, Mr. Mike, a.k.a. MJ Books Podcast. The countdown, which you can catch on. Is it on? I know it's on Podbean. Is it just on Podbean, or can they get it anywhere else? I appreciate the plug, man. Yeah, uh, I'm on uh, Podbean. Uh, uh, you can go on Facebook as well. Search the pod. Uh, search the countdown uh, podcast. Uh, you can uh, listen also on the Twitter feed. Uh, post them on there. For those who don't know, just counting down things and. Uh, I plan on doing a WrestleMania one, and that's one I really want to have you guys on for. Cool. And so far, you have uh, the DC films, the best and the worst yeah. of, right? Yeah. First one was the worst of DC. Second was uh, the best. Those were just two opinion ones. The next one will be a little more in the factual area. Okay. Yeah, I'm very curious to, to see. I, I started them. Um, I, I got time on my hands, so I'll probably finish them. Um, but yeah, I, definitely check them out. Um, are you on Instagram as well or social media? Uh, Twitter, yes. I'm not on Instagram yet. That, uh, that's where I'll probably go next. Also on Spotify as well. So uh, that'll probably be the next. It is just me doing this, so it's kind of hard following all this. Uh, just kind of getting started, but... Uh, I'm probably going to go to Instagram eventually. Okay. So make sure you check him out on Twitter, the Countdown Podcast, and you can download his shows from Podbean and Spotify, as well as this show, Spotify, Podbean, and Apple Podcasts. So make sure you go all out there, take care, stay home, wash your hands, only go out when necessary. You can take a walk around the block, but... Don't do too much. Um, Stay safe and take care.